boa tarde, bem-vindos à segunda parte deste primeiro dia de Portugal Air Summit. O segundo tema do dia que vamos discutir não podia ser mais claro e dispensa grandes apresentações. Pois é, vamos discutir então como fazer renascer o turismo, as companhias aéreas e os aeroportos das cinzas. Para moderar este debate, Gavin Ankles, da GE Consulting. Ok, good afternoon everybody. Um, welcome to Pontsor, for those who are with me today. And I would like to, first of all, introduce my panelists. I'll start on my left-hand side. I will start with Paula. Paula is the owner of Stratec Consulting. Stratec Consulting is very much working with airports around the world on development. On my right-hand side, we have Philippe Silva, the board member of Tourism of Portugal, Visit Portugal. And then joining us today from Lisbon, we have Professor Georgia Branch, the professor at the Estoril Hotel and Tourism School. And we have Mr. Yorai Toff, the managing director of Aviadev Europe, which is specializing in route development. So thank you very much to my panelists. Before I open the, the debate, I'd just like to use one minute just to introduce where we've come from. Obviously, 2019, a fantastic year for tourism. According to the UN WTO, about 1.4 billion international tourists. Tourism had been growing around 5% year on year for the last 10 years. Something happened back in February, and we're now having to understand where can we bring back tourism, airlines, and airports? How can we come back from the ashes? Our first question will be to each panelist, talking a little bit about the recovery. The second question to the panelists will be specific to the areas, airlines, airports, and tourism. And the third question will be a little bit about global, bringing the challenges back here to Portugal. If I could start, please, Philippe. How do you see tourism coming through the next, UNWTO said maybe 2024, before we're back to the levels of 19. Can we get back quicker, and how might we get back the best we can? If you'd like to, to give you a couple of minutes to explain where you think we are at the moment. Well, thank you very much, Sir Gavin. Good afternoon to everyone, uh, to my distinguished colleagues in the panel. Warm greetings from Ponto Sur, from the region of the Alentejo, one of the seven magnificent regions in Portugal. Uh, Coming back to your specific question, Gavin, uh, I would like to add that uh, probably this brings me to my mind two specific words. The first one is resilience. That shows how the tourism sector has been resilient over the last seven, eight decades, which proves a lot of the consistency of the tourism sector. So we've gone through oil crisis, economic crisis, um, health crisis as well, uh, some of them um, very much uh, regionally uh, located. Um, also, some, uh, some uh, problems regarding wars across the, the globe, but on a consistent basis, the tourism sector has proven to be very, very much resilient. The second word that brings me to, to my mind is sustainability, and that's very much look, looking into the future. Uh, very much uh, if sustainability it was and has been a very important word within our strategy as a national tourist office, it will be even more important from, uh, from now onwards. And that reflects very much the work that we as a destination and all destinations must do in order to be fully prepared to welcome every single tourist in their country. And that is very much related with a very delicate but essential uh, theme, which is trust the confidence from the consumer. We can work very hard in order to reinstate air connectivity, and here in Portugal, we've been doing a very significant uh, work on that matter. But we need to, uh, of course, bring those aircrafts with tourists, and that's very much related with trust, with confidence, in preparing ourselves in order to welcome, uh, from the health perspective, in order to bring that trust, that confidence to the consumer, and also urge countries to work together on a more consistent basis in order to provide common solutions uh, to, towards mobility. Thank you, excellent. So resilience, cooperation, I think, are key words. Paula, on the, the airport side, what, you know, 
how do you see their role in stimulating this kind of reemergence of what could be a tourism vision? Yeah, uh, thank you, Gavin, and thank you, the Portugal Air Summit, for inviting me. Um, I'm glad to, to be here in this online uh, world. Um, I think uh, airports and airlines, uh, uh, all the travel industry, uh, all this recover will depend ultimately, ultimately in the, the, cus the customer. So the recover, uh, the recovery will start with the with the, the customer. And currently, the customer do not does not have trust. Um, everything is now being uh, affected and disrupted. And uh, currently, uh, the main problem that I, I see is the cross border restrictions. So airlines and airports and tourism boards, um, they are making huge efforts to recover the, the trust and recover the demand, but ultimately it will depend on the recovery of the trust of the, cust the, the customer. And all of this, the, the European Council began to harmonize, harmonize cross-border restrictions. And this is having a huge impact on the, on the demand and is depressing, uh, is the depressing uh, demand. So um, I think it, it, we need to have uh, uh, this solved in the short term in order to think in this, uh, in this recovery. Um, all the main stakeholders, IATA, Airlines for Europe, uh, uh, ACI, are getting together finally to push uh, this to the European uh, Commission to have a, um, a pre-departure COVID-19 test. I think, in my opinion, this should be the focus on the short term of all the, of all the, the stakeholders. Um, so if we can see the, uh, uh, the recover, all players, tourism, airports, airlines, will have a say and will have to, to define how, how are we going to rebound. But if this is not solved in the short term, uh, I think we will have a, a very difficult uh, end of the year and a very difficult 2021. Currently, the assumptions, the common assumptions is that recovery will only happen in 2024 and 25. But again, this is all going to depend on the, on the customer and how do we work these, these issues. Thank you very much. Excellent. Professor George, can I ask you, on the airline side, as a professor of airline tourism, how do you see this recovery? How, what, what role can airlines play in bringing back tourism? Thanks, Gavin. Thanks also to Ponte do Sor in their summit for the invitation and uh, also a greet to all the members of this panel. Uh, let me uh, take into consideration two, two points, one mentioned by Philippe Silva, another one by Paula, that I think are important to take into consideration. If we take uh, um, all the statistics regarding traffic in the airlines, uh, all during, during all these years, we see that only in five periods, in, si in five years, we had a decrease in the number of um, travelers. And this was related to what uh, Philip Silva said, uh, wars or economic uh, issues. And uh, we have this, and it was no more than 3% uh, in general terms, the decrease, not the 50% we are having, we are having now. Um, it's true that we, we face a, a, a very difficult uh, period now. The trust, the confidence of the customer is a key factor in this moment. And if you can see, one of the things that we need to reinforce is communication in order that the message, especially to the ones that want to travel, can do it safely using uh, airlines and airports. Uh, IATA just published information saying that uh, in 1.2 1 1 billion of travelers, only 44 persons were considered infected uh, in, all these, in all these flights. Um, so the number is very, very, very uh, small. And this is why we need these communications in order to give confidence to the market. Because it's true that we have now hotels that are prepared to receive people, airports are prepared to receive people, Airlines are ready to fly, but if persons don't want to fly, there will be a problem because they are the base 
of putting this all together. So I think that uh, what we have now is we have more question marks, more questions than answers, because the, the, the situation is so confusing today, because the, we had a lockdown in the first phase, we are facing a partial lockdown in the second phase, putting again problems in mobility, and without this mobility, there is no way that things could work. No, I think you're absolutely right. It's, it's, it's trying to, everybody, um, play their part to ensure that the, the customer journey is seamless, integrated, and rightly coordinated. Yorai, I know a couple of weeks ago you had all, most of the European airlines, airports, tourism boards together. What are you hearing? You know, you're, you're, you're at the coalface of putting these units in the same room with Aviadev. What, what, what are people saying that, that we should be listening to? Yeah, first of all, thanks a lot for having me. I'm really sad that, I, that, I'm, not, that I'm not able to join you physically live in Portugal. I really wish to, to be there together with you. Um, yeah, I mean, what we have heard, uh, not just from the airports and the airlines and the tourism board, but from the whole, whole community is one word that is repeating quite often is not a recovery, it's a rebuild. Maybe I mean I think it's more and more widely understood by by everyone that uh, we are not going back to normal. We we won't see the world as we saw just a couple of months ago. So I really loved what uh, Filippo was saying about sustainability. So this is uh, from from my perspective, this is the moment that we should use as the opportunity to rebuild the industry, to rebuild aviation tourism relationships between those two sectors. Uh, with, uh, and definitely with a much stronger focus on, on sustainability. I will quote uh, two gentlemen. So we as Aviadev, we are now a platform. platform. We are not just organizing events uh, anymore. We have different kind of uh, services. We can help our community. We can support. Uh, we are all, also have a podcast. And recently on one of my podcast guests was Max Oldor from, from CH Aviation, a really, really experienced guy and proper av geek. And what he said stroked me quite a bit when he said that maybe now is the time to hibernate for the industry if 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 that's possible i mean the, this winter is pretty much lost there is not much we can do about it um as paula said there is still uh, lots of lots of mess in terms of of uh, rule quarantine rules all over the continent uh, so what we should now focus all industry whole community is to get things together and focus on april on march april 2021 that we are ready from that point really to rebuild the connectivity rebuild the links between aviation and tourism and involve the whole sector and and uh, and focus on that okay thank you thank you very much thank you to all of you on those kind of just general points Let, let's try and look at each in specific let I'll, i'm going to come back to you george and, and use the comment then of, of, um, of uh, your eye about rebuilding. Some cynics would say airlines were growing too fast. There was too much capacity back anyway in 2019. Is it, is it how can airlines rebuild? Where should they build? Is it the low cost? We had this vision of long haul low cost, the Norwegian model, taking people across the Atlantic for $99. Where do you see our industry going? George, in relation to airlines, more low cost, more hub and spoke, Emirates are finding difficulties in reigniting the hub in Dubai, rebuild, hibernate, restart, what's it going to look like? Well, I think starting from your first point uh, uh, regarding capacity, when you have a sector that was with load factors uh, with more than 80%, I think that the capacity was adjusted to what the market needed. So there was no, it was excess of capacity if you are running in 60% or even less than that. But the airlines were running with 80% or more than 80%. So it means that the, the airlines were uh, capitalizing these good moments of the market. We had the five best years of ever of the aviation in the market with good results, good profits. And now airlines and all the sector is suffering from something that they don't ask. That's the question. The, uh, 
I think the, the what we'll have in the market now in this moment is for sure that will will be the will be essential uh, because now what you have is a total mess in the market. You had a lot of commercial aircraft doing cargo flights during this period where the borders were closed. So trying to do something in, instead of being uh, with all the, the fleet grounded. Um, it's true that perhaps the urban spoke model will suffer a little bit because people will try to go direct. But as we know, no, there is no con direct connections between old cities, important or secondary cities. So sometimes there is no alternatives than to go by an important airport. Um, long haul, low cost, it's a model that was uh, um, in the market growing, um, like the other models. So airlines will have to readjust. Uh, some of them will be more hybrid than they are today. Uh, that will be, so the airlines have to be, um, to look at the opportunities and try to work with the opportunities they will find in the market. So okay. it will be quite difficult during this moment to say that, no, that will be, all will be low cost, all will be traditional. Um, I think now what airlines ha want is to have capacity to, uh, to plan flights, to plan capacity according to the, 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 the expected flows of traffic, and after the question of the model will be adjusted in order that these opportunities will will be in the in the market. Excellent, thank you. So plenty of work for consultants for scenario planning. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Before I come to, to my panelists here in in Ponsor, would you like to make any comments on 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 what you're seeing in the general aviation picture uh, that that supports what Georgia said, which is really we're not sure what might come next. Your micro is off. Can you, uh, there we go. I'm very sorry about no, that. No, no, no. Uh, I, I read somewhere that you are on mute is the most used sentence in 2020. So I'm just an example <laughs> of that, obviously. Um, I will just elaborate on what George was saying about the hub and spoke model is, uh, suffer uh, a bit, especially in the first first uh, moments. And I would quote uh, Mr. Varadi, the CEO of Wizzair, who said in one of the interviews recently, uh, and in a way I, I kind of agree with him, that uh, the regional airports with mostly point-to-point -point traffic will recover quicker. Uh, because they are not so reliant on business traffic, which will suffer the most. And uh, uh, I mean, we are all aware that uh, business travelers are very much linked to the legacy carriers. So, so those, those those big players like Lufthansa and KLM and Air France, and uh, I mean globally as well, in, in uh, on every single continent, uh, because business tra travel will recover probably as last. So we we see domestic travel slowly coming coming back. We far more or less um, can can come back as well, but business travel probably will be will be last to come back. But I am I am very much positive that it will come back eventually because we are. This is it's great that we can be connected online to whichever platform, but in the end we are we are humans and the human touch is not replaceable with any kind of technology. So in the end, I'm sure also business travel will come back, but uh, but. Uh, it will it will suffer for quite a longer time than, and that's also linked to the airport. So big hub airports, it will take them uh, from my, my perspective much longer to, to, to really recover than the smaller regional airports. And this this is also linked to the to the carrier. So I, I said that uh, um, um, big hub carriers will, will suffer. On the other end, low cost players who are more flexible, obviously with uh, much lower cost base. Um, they they can they can grow even as we are for example shown even in this uh, catastrophic uh, environment. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it's uh, I'll ask Philippe in a little minute about what what role tourism is playing in that. But I'll, I'll come to Paula first. Paula, tell me, obviously, without airlines, we don't need airports. You know, I think a lot of people talk about airlines and bailouts. What's going on with airports? How do you see airports recovering? 
you know, without passengers, there's no revenue coming in from the airlines, there's no non-aviation revenue. What, what's the situation? How can airlines kind of reinvent, or sorry, airports yeah. reinvent themselves, work in partnership with airlines, et cetera? Give us your views on how you see the future of airports in these challenging times. Yeah, I, I will uh, use something that you are, were saying, uh, that we do not need to recover, we need to rebuild. Uh, I believe we need to do things differently. Uh, and perhaps this unprecedented uh, crisis that we are uh, seeing now can be used to do that. Um, and so uh, airports and airlines need, in my opinion, uh, to collaborate more. They, they, they need to do things very differently from, from the past. Uh, one thing that I think they, they could do is to collaborate in terms of uh, uh, revenue sharing, either non-aeronautical from the airports, either non-ancillary for, uh, for the airlines. Uh, if they, ca they can collaborate together, because in the past uh, they did not really collaborate, they can enlarge the pie and share the pie. Uh, one, day, one way to do this uh, is do by personalization, do personalization at scale, for example. Um, for, for this, uh, we need data-driven strategy. We need airports and airlines to share data, to communicate uh, data, to, to forecast and plan, uh, and plan together. Uh, I believe if this is the, the new way of doing things, both of them can, uh, can uh, win. Uh, so we, we at this moment need to excite and to attract the traveler. And this cannot be done if everyone, being airlines, airports, or tourism, work in monoliths. Uh, they need to work together. They need to share that. Uh, um, history does, uh, is over because we, uh, we don't have history to recover from this. So we need these, uh, uh, these uh, new strategies uh, based on uh, forecast data. For example, uh, we are now using data from MasterCard. Uh, that is available five days after uh, the purchase and social media to forecast where there is new in-demand focus uh, in terms of, of routes. So this is a new way. It's uh, redoing things uh, in a completely different uh, way. And, and for this to work, they really need to collaborate. The focus, of course, cutting costs. All of the players need to adjust, airports as well. Uh, but they need to focus how are we going to rebuild uh, in the next phase, and they should be working on these and not just everyone cutting costs and not thinking how, how are we going to not recover as you are, but rebuild. I think that's going to be key. Thank you. I, I think, yes, it's this rebuild, as Uri has, has given the, 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 the term. Philippe, from the tourism board's point of view, how are you seeing the way that you're working, this kind of national versus regional, public-private concept? It was mentioned that domestic tourism, how are you looking and with other tourism boards? How, what, what, are, what are we doing at the moment to try to manage this crisis? Well, thank you very much, uh, Gavin. Uh, in this particular case, I mean, we see uh, across the boards, uh, regional and national tourist boards, uh, particularly in the, in the European case, which is uh, the one I'm more aware of, uh, very, working very much close, close together. But, but uh, please bear in mind that the current situation is by far uh, completely extraordinary. Uh, and um, I mean, it's, it's a, a situation where you, where you see from the airline side a significant drop in their capacity. Uh, airlines are uh, decreasing their fleets, uh, they're decreasing their, their staff level, and that of course reduces in terms of the options uh, for developing uh, new, uh, uh, new routes, new opportunities, or to keep the existing one. I believe that uh, the majority of the shareholders of airlines will ask their executive board in order to focus on the profitable routes and dropping the ones that are not profitable. This is a very economic driven perspective. And this leads to, uh, to the work that we as a national tourist board, uh, as, as national tourist boards together with our regional partners, we need to focus and work together with airports, 
and of course with airlines in order to build uh, sustainable from the economical perspective, sustainable routes, sustainable business in order for these routes to produce in time. So this is essential in the next business model that, uh, that we have in, in front of us. And on the domestic tourism, how, what, how, how do you, how, is, how are people seeing that in relation to the importance of every, you know, the internationalization, bringing, you know, people say the international tourists spend more than the domestic tourists. Is that reality? You know, we'll come on to Portugal more specifically, but just generally, yes. is there this, you know, can domestic tourism help at the moment? Is it something that- It does, it does help. It yeah. does provide, you know, significant business uh, to all destinations. Some of them are more relying on domestic. Uh, some of them are more relying on the international business, but it always plays a very significant role. And please bear in mind that uh, with short breaks, with uh, different type of holidays that the locals might uh, develop in their own country, they can provide good business across the whole year and not just on a seasonal basis. They can explore their own country and of course, uh, why not increase the, the, the revenue, but that depends very much on the tourism offer. So, and that's very much related with the private sector, what the private sector together with the public sector can provide as experiences, as options for a resident in a specific country to enjoy when traveling in that country. I would tend to say that uh, across different um, uh, international uh, destinations, we've seen a spike in terms of domestic tourism, but we believe that of course this business in the medium term will also be able to travel on an international basis. But that's uh, very much related also, uh, again, on the trust, on the confidence that these travelers will have in the future. Very much related with what ourselves as a, des as a destination are capable to provide from the health perspective and also together with the travel advice again which is essential in order to build this trust in the consumer side. No, thank you. And I think it's, uh, you know, I think from the, 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 what I'm hearing here in, in, the, in Ponsor and what's coming from our panelists virtual, it, you know, everything's ready. I think, you know, we, we, we realize that we need partnerships. We realize the importance of the way that the, the airports and the tourism need to coordinate with the airlines. The airlines need to feel that somebody is helping them and that there is this relationship that says, you know, we're in it together and trying to come out of the problem. As was said, we just don't know what that will look like. And I think it's, uh, before we just go into a little bit about where we are in Portugal and what's happening, does anybody want, to, is there any comments from the four of you just in terms of generalization and then specifics that you want to raise? If anybody wants to add anything, please do so. If not, we'll go into the more general discussion about Portugal. If anybody wants to add anything, um, please. Well, uh, sorry, Gavin, I, no, I, would, I would like to have, you know, a, an effective uh, and uh, cheap vaccine in order to, to handle all this pandemic situation, if I'm allowed to say. But again, uh, talking a bit, a bit more seriously, I think also working on the consumer confidence, it is re really important in order to tackle uh, the issue related with testing, testing uh, passengers that are traveling from one country to another. And that reflects immediately on the trust, on the, co on the confidence from a consumer side. So if you have a situation or if you have a solution that is related with uh, a test, uh, an effective and quick and cheap test on departure, and please bear in mind this is very important, on departure, not on arrival, this is key in order to bring more people coming in, into the travel business. Of course, of course. So uh, just a, a small note, but very important no, one, no, that we believe that it will be uh, generating more trust, more confidence on the consumer side. Anybody want to comment? Anything else? Very, very quickly from my side, I totally support what Philippe said about testing on departure. We saw uh, at Heathrow, they, they finally started with their tests um, but also following up what George said about uh, statistics published by EATA, I don't really think that people are afraid they can get 
infected uh, on the flight. I think what they are more afraid of is this uns in uns uncertainty about the borders closures and quarantine rules. That they will fly, for example, to Portugal for an extended weekend, and on Sunday afternoon they will found, found, find out that they have to stay in for 14 days in a quarantine once they return. So I think there is a lot of work need, needs to be done on this on this subject from the whole continental level. Yeah, I think, you know, at this stage, there's this, we don't know where we're going to be for the next four or five months, but at some point, what comes next? And I think it's, it's what was being said before. Do, you know, are we, do we go back into business the same way as we were doing in 2019? I hope not. And I think we've, you know, in any, in any adversity, let's, you know, this is more than adversity, but the role of an adverse situation is to look for differences. I don't think what's important is to then understand where might we think differently about the future. Let's, let's, we have about 10, 15 minutes left. So let, let, let's, you know, as Philippe said here, for those of you who are coming in um, via the streaming, we're, we're beaming today from, a, from the middle of Portugal, from a, a small city that has taken a storm in aeronautical development. I had the, the potential to meet the team in Dubai back in, in February when we had real events. Um, and of course, we, we have here the, the representation for, for, for Visit Portugal. And let's be honest, Portugal had, was booming. We were 27 million nights, bed nights, Philippe, correct me if I'm wrong, by the, the end of 2019, up 7%. Portugal was winning awards. And in this rebuild that, that your eyes mentioned, how, how can we ensure that Portugal is a business case for others? And your eye, if I, I'll ask you a little bit later, to help us with any other cases that you know of, but how can we ensure that we don't go, we don't, we actually want to go back to where we were in 2019 in reality because it was great, but in a new way. George, I'll, I'll, I'll let you speak first. What role do you see the airlines playing with Portugal in the new vision of whatever this new normal might be? Is it in the hands of TAP? Is it in the hands of the low costs? It's a little bit of a crystal ball to you, but. How can Portugal continue to what we did in 2019 and build that into 21 and, and going on? One of the big uh, question mark in this whole process is that uh, vaccine. And if we get that uh, vaccine that gives confidence to the market, I'm sure that the market will not be during next year, as we were in 19, but will recover a little bit faster. I want to be optimistic that, especially on the leisure market, on tourism market, that people want to travel, want to go abroad, want to go to concerts, want to go to the restaurants. So, wants to be a little bit, is a little bit bored and fed out of these uh, lockdowns and to be at home and uh, wants to enjoy a little bit from these missing, uh, missing times. In Portugal, we are, we are facing a, a period that is not, uh, um, is a complicated one. If you look at TAP with all this uh, process, and I, I don't want to, to look from the political side, but on the commercial side more than the, 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 other, the other points, and uh, with the recovery, and um, it's true that uh, the, the, the process will be painful uh, because the dimension of the market and dimension of the airline has to be adjusted. Others are occupying that position, and if you see what is happening in Europe, it's true that uh, Ryanair is adjusting capacity, EasyJet is opening a new base, even seasonal in Faro. Uh, with there is opening a, 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 a new bases elsewhere in Europe, trying to to to, to take the opportunity to, to grow in the market, um, and you have you have the, the, the all the other uh, traditional airlines flying to Portugal. So uh, what we'll have is a, a period that the, when the market is uh, is more stable. Uh, in my opinion, they will recover. For that, is is essential to have this vaccine. Is essential to have this this um, capacity of bring confidence to the market. 
not only because the closures of the borders, as you have said, that are important, but we have to take into consideration also the economic aspects. A lot of people don't know what will be the future, if they will lose jobs or will lose income. And this is also a part of the game that can't be uh, forgot, because we are talking about persons. Thank you. Thank you very much. Paula, the same. The end of 2019, Lisbon Airport, 31 million passengers in and out. Airlines saying, hey, you're full. People talked about Montijo, a second airport of Lisbon. Where are we? How do you see the future? Yeah, um, so Montijo is, uh, is something, the airport of Lisbon is something that uh, has been on discussion for the last 50 years. I'm, I'm not a fan of a two airport system, but at some point we need to stop discussing Montijo. Uh, of course that we are now in the middle of uh, the biggest crisis in the aviation history, uh, but uh, I think we all agree that we will recover when question mark, but this is long-term investment we are talking about. So uh, we cannot afford to continue to discuss this and Montijo needs to happen. Perhaps we have now two or three years more uh, where we can perhaps improve the project. Uh, yes, but we need to move forward because I think the country will lose significantly if we don't have this, uh, uh, this capacity. And of course, that uh, in the short term, uh, the airport will need to cut costs, will need to continue to be competitive in terms of fees. Uh, airport fees are, are critical for, for us to, to, to attract, uh, attract airlines, but I would say they need to do more. Um, they, they need to, uh, to offer uh, to the traveler a seamless journey, we're discussing that uh, just now. Um, and so all the, 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 uh, the stakeholders, uh, airlines, airports, uh, tourism operators, they need to optimize uh, the experience, the travel experience, it, they do that again by collaborating, exchanging data, continue generating insights and, and, and work together. Because one thing that I also wanted to, to discuss uh, here, one of the main uh, disruptors, the competitors, the online travel agents, the bookings platforms, the, the meta search engines, they are disrupting, they are, were already disrupting the, the travel valuation and they will continue to do that. Uh, and so uh, they are competing for value for the digital consumer. And if these players do not work together and do not collaborate, they will be, uh, uh, these, these guys will eat the biggest part of the value generated by the, by the travel. So we will fail if we don't uh, uh, work to uh, together, if we don't build digital platforms to put all the entire ecosystem uh, together. So yes, airports need now to be co very competitive in the short term, but they need to, to think in the long term, build capacity, Montijo, and also to, to move forward in this seamless experience. And they only can do that if they work with all the players and not separately like it was in the past. Thank you, thank you very much. Philippe, before I ask your eye on his inputs, Two, two, probably two, two points. Source markets, UK, Germany, France, Spain, they were, they were powering Portugal tourism, but you've done great work with Brazil, North America. Where do you see this in the next couple of years? Who's coming back first, et cetera? And how are you supporting that with your incentives, et cetera, the work you mentioned earlier on? So any changes in the vision because of what we're learning now? Well, thank you very much, uh, Gavin. Uh, first of all, thank you for your kind words on the, on the results, good results, excellent results on Portugal over the last uh, few years and, uh, and the awards that Portugal has been getting. And that's, uh, you know, full credits to all our private and, and public partners as well. And this is, uh, increases the strong commitment and responsibility from our end in order to continue this, this uh, uh, important work uh, for the future. So. Coming back to your specific question, uh, let me get back to March, April, when we, we were significantly hit by this, uh, this crisis. Uh, we had to immediately readjust our campaign. So we were you know, developing our international campaign, um, Kanski Portugal, which is a very, very uh, important international campaign, highly recognized overseas. 
but we had to readjust it, considering that that was not the correct time in order to advertise or to um, uh, advertise Portugal as a tourism destination because it was a time to stop, refocus, and join for forces in order to do our homework, in order to prepare ourselves uh, for, for the future to, from the health perspective to be fully prepared. So that was back in March, April. Uh, and we also launched a very interesting campaign, Read Portugal. So we were uh, asking people to read uh, Portuguese authors uh, that, uh, that had their um, books uh, uh, writing about uh, their travels in Portugal, so inspiring them um, on future travels to Portugal. Then we reach May, June, so that's when the economy starts to reopen. Uh, restaurants, um, getting more business, hotels, golf courses, car rental companies. Uh, we launched the campaign, you can't skip opening, and that's very much focusing in sending out the message on the hard work that all these private professionals have been doing across these months in order to be fully prepared and committed with the health guidelines that uh, have been stated by the health authority. So that has been very, very, very much important in order to send out this important message, not only the, to the consumer, but also to our uh, partners on the different markets, on the key markets, and also in uh, Brazil, the US, Canada, uh, which are markets that uh, most likely they will open a bit later, but um, hopefully uh, soon enough. Uh, but it was also important to send this uh, message to them explaining what Portugal was doing from the health perspective because they know what they get from Portugal in terms of all the cooperation on their uh, operations to, uh, to, towards our, um, our regions. So the marketing support, the wor uh, working together with, uh, with our airports as well, with our regional tourist boards and of course with our private partners. So all together I think that uh, the, the message has been you know, very, very effective and we're, we're very much looking for, for the near future in order to have a, a better perspective and better results for the different regions in Portugal. Great, thank you. Yorai, you heard you can't skip Portugal. Unfortunately, you, you couldn't be with us today, but what can we learn? What can you, from your experience of looking into the country, working with other countries, is there anything that we can be doing differently or what we're doing can be replicated? Of course, just a quick uh, personal note on Can't Skip Portugal. I was just once in my life in Portugal. It was, it was in Porto in 2017. And that was the first time that I saw this advertising, Can't Skip Portugal. And I was totally amazed how great it was, how touchy, touching it was. And I, I fell in love with Porto at the time because it's a fantastic destination. And I can't wait to be back in Portugal and to explore another, another fantastic places in, in, in the country. Um, I have airport background, so before I joined uh, Aviadev, I was working for seven years for a regional airport, Košice, here in Slovakia, in development. And uh, it was also the time when we started to work closely together with the city, bo city tourism board and the regional tourism board. And I know it may sound like a biggest cliche ever, but you guys just need to work together, but I mean really to work together. Airports and tourism boards, either on the city level, regional level, or or national level, because also back back then when I was at the airport, things really started to take off when we really were working together. And I think the, another example I will mention, uh, I think the strongest example of how a destination can really lead the route development uh, activity for a destination is, is Valencia. So of course, not just because we hosted two of our events there in 2018 and 2019, but the whole route development of the whole of the region is led by the tourism board, by Turismo Valencia. So, of course, the airport belongs to AENA, uh, and uh, but on the on the route development um, level, Turismo Valencia, with enormous support from the city government, from the regional government, they go to all kinds of events. They spend a lot of not just uh, uh, financials, but also energy and creativity on promoting Valencia all over the world, not just in Europe, also also they are very active on, on China market, for example. 
Um, so I think that's that's definitely one example to to follow Europe wide and the, the work uh, Miguel Angel Perez and his team has has been doing in Valencia for the last couple of years is just is just magnificent. Um, and one quick one more quick example also Lithuanian airports the relationship they have with their stakeholders is also extremely extremely impressive. So for example they hold quarterly meetings with their stakeholders, be it not just tourism boards, chambers of commerce, all other organizations which are in whatever way linked to the, to the airport. Every three months they come together, they explain the new strategy, new goals, new targets, what has been achieved, the results from the last quarter and way forward and talking together. So, I mean, it's not from my side, uh, it's not really rocket science, just work together, but really work together, not just on the paper, not just on the pictures for the media, really, we need to really work together. Well, thank you, and I'm not sure if you can see, but that we have a little clock counting down and I've just hit 10 seconds, so I have to thank the four panelists for being prompt with your great answers, and I think probably I can get one or two minutes just to wrap everything up, but I think reality says is that, look, we, need, we don't know where we're going. I think George pretty much said that in that we don't know the models that will come out of it. Paula's put across that partnerships have to happen. Philippe has given the vision of what needs to be done, bringing the different entities. And then of course, learning from others and the importance of benchmarking and you know, not, not thinking that we're in this in alone. You know, it's important that, 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 that there's, a, there's a belief that we're all in this together. So trying to partner, you know, the, the expression synergy is greater than the sum of the parts. It's about the whole needs to come out. And as I said, for Portugal to get back to 2019 in tourism numbers would be fantastic. For the airport, we, we're worried because the airport was starting to say it's getting full. But, you know, the airlines, we don't know what model's coming next. So in all of this kind of uncertainty, there must be opportunities. And it's that what we need to now focus on. How do we try to move, as you say, from what could be reignition, no, no, to actually rebuilding and picking up. So final comments from anybody, 20 seconds each, just to, Paolo, if I start with you. Yeah, I think we, we should know that the, the passengers have changed dramatically and, uh, and they change, all, all that we knew in the past is now completely different. So we have to forget uh, the past and for, for that, uh, all the, the stakeholders again uh, need to uh, exchange uh, uh, the data, real data, to, colla to collaborate and to plan together. I, I, I agree with you, Raz. Uh, the tourism should be even more active in uh, in route development and in measuring the customer value and uh, uh, helping. Only not uh, it should not be only the airlines deciding which routes because different routes have different value to the country. And so it should be uh, these, and we should be measuring the impact almost in a daily basis of, uh, of this. And I think this is uh, very important in moving forward because now we are on uncharted waters. So we, we need we need this. Thank you. You're right. Thank you for joining us. I'll leave you to, to say your final comments. Just a quick quote from Winston Churchill. Never let a good crisis go to waste. I think this is the moment. This is the moment we should use this crisis as an opportunity to rebuild our industry with focus on sustainability, maybe managing seasonality better, which is another issue, and also in boosting creativity so we can see more campaigns like Kansky, Portugal, uh, all over the Europe today. Professor George, anything to comment? Well, hope in the future. The times we, times are now, and now is the time to rebuild and to look uh, forward in order to have airlines, tourism, airports, clients happy in order to rebuild what will be the market in the future. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Philippe, the last word. Well, like our slogan in our initial campaign, we can't keep hope. And definitely these are challenging and very extraordinary times that requires double or triple the efforts in terms of our commitment in order to tackle this pandemic situation. Thank you very much. I thank you for all of you four for making the time to be with us today. And thank you to Pont Saw for this great event and hopefully look forward to any follow up on anything. Please go through portugalairsummit.pt. Thank you very much.